when was your first viral moment? Like, can you remember back to when like something hit and you knew it hit and you made a bunch of money? Can you remember that? Yeah, yeah, actually. I went and jumped out of the, the plane on the side wearing a suit. That video through all the different pages that was shared, it was like above 300 million views. What's going on, y'all? Welcome to the RFA Bosses series. We have an amazing, amazing show for y'all today. All right, we're here with the boss entrepreneur. This guy is, is a real estate mogul. This guy has over a million followers on IG. I like to say, you know, he, he he's the Mr. Beast of real estate. He's literally crushing it. And we actually have the privilege today of him gracing his presence with us today, you know. So, so give it up for Alvaro Nunez. What's going on, Alvaro? How are you? <laughs> What's up, guys? I love What's the introduction. Up, it's too, too, too humble. To, to hear all of that. I mean, definitely you guys know how to hype up and make someone feel special. Nah, don't so. even play. Listen, guys, like we had to literally pull him out of a helicopter just to be on <laughs> this show with us tonight, right? This guy's like jumping out of planes and, and selling real estate before he even hits the ground. That's Alvaro. <laughs> <laughs> well, oh, fun, fun note. You actually hit it right there. This morning I was flying a helicopter and showing houses from the sky with a client. So that was quite special. Wow. <laughs> See, I, that look, is I was joking, but it actually wasn't a joke. That's how crazy this <laughs> guest is. So y'all need to like everything that we talk about today, y'all need to pay close attention and take some notes. Talk a little bit of, because, because our audience is new to you. So can you talk a little bit about uh, your journey to get to this particular point? Can you, can you let the audience know about your journey? Yeah, I mean, also based in Florida, like you guys love it here. Miami is a very special place to me. It's always been in my vision board when I was a kid. And as any kid, you always have a dream for me was to become a professional tennis player. When I was back home in Madrid, Spain, we ended up hitting a very huge financial crisis. My father also was not doing very well with his health and we ended up losing everything. So the fact of not able to continue that route, I had to shift and pivot a little bit. So I used tennis as leverage, as it's a sport that I've played since I was a kid and used it to come to the States on a scholarship, ended up coming in here, get my education, become the best version of myself, and ended up coming to South Florida where I ended up working at a startup, marketing per se, learning all the tricks. And after that, once I was able to gather enough knowledge and get myself into a really good position and reach that American dream of earning six-figure income at 22 years old, getting all the toys I wanted, helping my family and getting all the different exciting things that I've always dreamed of. I ended up not getting my work visa, had to leave the country. And instead of going back to Madrid, Spain, where I could land a job, I decided to go for really what was fulfilling my life and becoming an entrepreneur. Because sometimes we forget, guys, that at the end of the day, career is not everything in life. And this is what I call the wheel of life. I started to look into all the areas of life and what was really that lifestyle that I wanted to have. And I ended up putting in that, you know, little shaker, all the different passions that I had and ended up building Super Luxury Group. First of all, like, I want the audience to, to really listen to what Alvaro just said, like, Things weren't always like super great, right? You grew up and, and there were ups and downs in your journey. Mm -hmm. But one thing that, that Alvaro did is he found a way out of that situation. And you, you moved to tennis to kind of get yourself out of that particular predicament or that situation. So things might not be going your way. It might seem like it's the end of the world, but it's your ability to focus on your abilities and not your disabilities that is going to take you to the next level. So I just kind of want to point that, point that out, Alvaro, because that, that was a gem within the gems that you just dropped. <laughs> no, and I mean, thank you for pointing that out. 100% what you just said is just a little bit of a background story. I definitely, I was just putting so much energy and work into that particular area of my life, which was my career, and forgot about everything else. So whenever I didn't get that work visa, it was just a wake-up call. Mm -hmm. And I realized that I was not living a balanced and extraordinary life. And that's when I started to kind of shift a little bit and started to put more energy and effort in all of the areas and started to build my dream lifestyle. And I always say that it's about building a business that fuels your passion. And the vehicle that you're trying to build is what's going to allow you to live that lifestyle. And the business that I ended up building, it became the vehicle to live the life that I live today. 
what I picked up from that too, man, is that a lot of times opportunities come packaged as misfortune. Yeah. Right. And a lot of times we don't have, we don't, we don't recognize the opportunities because they, they present themselves and they're packaged as failures or potential like misfortunes or things that didn't go our way. So by you not getting that visa, it, it maybe at that time, it seemed like, oh man, like that's a bad thing, but that actually opened the doors for all the other things that ended up coming your way. Right. And the other thing was like, you had a safe job. You could have went back to Spain and, and had a little safe, comfy thing, but you decided to actually go the other way. You know, you decided to go the, the not safe route. And it sounds like that's been working out pretty good for you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, guys, you said it right there. It's about taking those risks because if you take risks on something that you're passionate about, even if you go down, you're going down doing something you love. And for me, I was afraid, I was scared, but I ended up moving to Dominican Republic. I saw an opportunity. I saw something that combined all the different things that I was passionate about, which include traveling, high-end real estate, experiences, and connecting with people. And when I ended up going to the DR, which was not too far from Miami, for sake, I was like, well, I know I'm going to go back to Miami. I just need to figure out the route. And I ended up moving to the DR. I saw all these beautiful waterfront properties that were facing the ocean and were incredible homes, and they were all empty. Because people that used to travel to the DR back in the day, they were all going to this five-star all-inclusive resort. Nobody was really going and renting a villa. Airbnb was barely starting and there were not even properties in that platform. People were kind of like afraid of booking something on one of those sites and then going there and not finding the home. So right. the safe route was always to go to these nice resorts. So I saw an opportunity in there as I was door knocking on every house. And with the background of marketing, I ended up putting proposals in place on how we can really potentiate those homes and renting them out while producing some additional income and keeping them all good. At this point that you kind of stopped at, you were you were successful in real estate. You were showing these oceanfront properties. You were showing you were showing the luxury. So you were in it. You were seeing it. At what particular moment did you realize that Instagram was going to be another vehicle that could lead to, to you getting more business? It's a good question because at one point I was like, all right, I'm new in the game. I'm kind of getting there. I have leverage through the properties that I have access to, but I don't have the clientele that I wish I can work with. You know, how do I get to work with Will Smith, Tom Cruise, Bill Gates? How do I get to these people? How can I work with big celebrities? And at that time, since I didn't have really a background with all these connections, I said, all right, let's tap into OPAs, other people audiences. Who are those that have built already those audiences that have already access to these people? And at the time, it was not called influencers, but it is what we call today influencers. As you start looking into each profile for the people that I wanted to work with, you can definitely see through Instagram the people that they were following as they follow just a really low amount of people. And some of them, the commonality was that they followed these people that were literally, literally believing and living out of their personal brands. So when you look at these people, okay, maybe they were not called influencers, but they were people that were living out of the personal brands. So how can I leverage the houses and use these people to come into the property for free, which 99% of them will say yes. They will continue doing their own thing. All they have to do in exchange is just to promote the house promote my brand. And that's how it kind of started to roll on and it became a success. When you were like in the beginning, what are some, like, what are some of the ways that you were setting up these plays? Because like you were just like probably like a smaller Instagram uh, profile at that point, And you're trying to reach out to all these people to kind of leverage their audiences. Like what were you doing to actually close those deals and make those opportunities like happen? When this started, there was no such flow of messages on Instagram like it is today. You know, today you get floated with all these like request DMs and spams and all this crazy stuff. So the name itself and the way that we were approaching people, it was pretty straightforward. It was basically at a time where people will still see in those DMs. And when you were offering them a free stay at a villa, it was something that was not really happening before. So we used that as the angle on how to approach these people. And the majority that answered to these messages, they were interested because who doesn't want to stay four or five days at a beautiful home and all they have to do is just to promote it. So the, the 
I guess the machine started working because owners were not familiar with the concept, but as we were approaching with the right proposal, it's like, listen, attention is the strongest currency. We need to get people to bring eyeballs to this property in order for us to rent it and sell it. So how can we do it without going the traditional route? How can we stand out from everyone else? So as we expanded internationally, we started to go into the jet set locations, which is where all these people travel into. And we started to just build this network of people. And the more eyeballs that we were getting into our brand, the more eyeballs we were starting to get into the properties that we were working with. And it just became a domino effect because guess what? Also luxury brands want to be part of this mix. It's a lifestyle. So we started to partner up with luxury brands that also wanted to have their products placed in the properties. And believe it or not, as everybody was sharing this content, our brand became more viral. Our contacts expanded rapidly. We started to work with many different influencers that became ambassadors of our business. Through them, we reached out our potential clientele. And not only that, but we also ended up building amazing relationships with all kinds of people in that space, whether it's real estate brokers, interior designers, developers, architects, and all the other luxury brands. And that's what it became SLG Network as one of the divisions within our company. So one thing I want to point out here for the audience here, you know, we teach a lot about the most effective way to collect leads. In Alvaro's case, his, his ideal client, his customer avatar was celebrities, people who are buying high-end real estate. So what Alvaro decided to do was create a lead magnet, right? He created a lead magnet based off of the property. So the property is the lead magnet. He offered them a free stay at the property, right? Who's going to mm -hmm. say no to that? No one. And one of the keys to creating an irresistible offer is creating something that's mind blowing that everyone will say yes to. So what Alvaro did was created a solid lead magnet, got in his ideal clientele. And the, the play was, hey, come stay here for four or five days. All you have to do is promote the property on your Instagram. And then what that did was that expanded his reach and expanded his audience to even more people that are actually going to spend money with him now to blow up his yep. real estate brand. That is, that's genius, brother. That is. And it's really, it's really just all about being resourceful, right? Like Alvaro was basically saying, look, look, I don't got everything in the world, but I got these villas and, and I can leverage these villas, these resources that I have to go out and get the things that I want. So I want everyone listening right now. Don't be a victim. Don't be a victim of like, oh, I don't have the things that I need to, to, to level up my life. I'm telling you, start being resourceful and start looking at all the things that you have around you right now, because I guarantee, I guarantee you, if you really take inventory, you look around, you got more around you than you actually think. And you can leverage those resources to get the things that you want. You know what I mean? hundred percent. And it's so beautifully how you said it, guys, because it is true, right? It's about leveraging, about being resourceful with whatever you have. I didn't have hundreds of villas on my portfolio. I started with one and slowly started to get another one and then another one. And then you start leveraging what you got. And I got to the point where not only I was leveraging villas, but I was leveraging also the ambassadors that we had on the team. Because now that I can approach any brand with the property and the ambassadors, people are like, oh, we like this, you know, because they want attention. Attention is the strongest currency. So that's what ended up opening us all the doors. Now, it gets even more creative, right, as everything advances, because as I start working with all these influencers, I start seeing the amount of opportunities that are coming their way. So I said, okay, well, it is not as complicated as I thought to become one, and I want to become within my space. I want to do it within the lifestyle, real estate, entrepreneurship. So how can I start applying those skills and do it towards myself? Because in order for you to sell a product, you need to sell yourself first. So that's when I started to apply the same mechanism towards my brand, my personal brand. And my personal brand was backing up my business brand and my business brand was backing up my personal one. So we ended up both growing tremendously. And this is what opened even more sources of leads, which I believe that it's another really cool way of focusing on marketing. Because at the end of the day, what do we all want here? Instant credibility, authority, and leads that come your way. And that's just a magnet. Wow. Do, you still, do you still find yourself kind of using the same strategies, like, you know, giving free villas or giving th like things away to kind of get on other people's platforms and stuff like that? Or is it a little bit easier now that you have a little bit more mo momentum? 
um, or, or how's that looking for you right now? Right. Everything, as you said, is about building momentum. It's the compound effect. So I'm not putting the same effort I was doing at the beginning in terms mm -hmm. of offering free villas. Now people just come to us and pay for these villas, right? Mm -hmm. And we kind of upgraded the system. We're not doing rentals anymore. We're focusing only on sales. So we uplifted the way that we present our product. Our product is not a $10 million that we can rent it. Now it's a $50 million for sale. And we are working on some of the most iconic properties, not only here in South Florida, but around the world. And we provide unique marketing services. So I got a call today of somebody that has a $50 million in the South of France, one of the most expensive homes. They want to hire us to promote and sell the property. So the way that we can do it, it comes down to the strategies that we built. Here in Miami, just a few weeks ago, we were having this content creator house that we had for an entire month a house that was above $10 million. We just packed it up with over 400 influencers that were coming in and out, high-end influencers. We're not talking about the 14-year-old TikTokers. We're talking about like high-end influencers that work with luxury brands. So we were keeping that lifestyle that represents the DNA of our brand. And those brands were paying campaigns to these influencers to promote. And we were doing contests and we were, it's about recreating the way that you're doing things. I've always believed that in order for you to be successful, you need to hit first. So it doesn't matter if you go wrong or right, but just hit first. So for us, it's always about how can we be disruptors within this industry? And on a personal level, it is more about how can I become myself an outlier? Because there's too many people that are doing the same thing. And by the same thing, I mean selling real estate. So how can I reintroduce myself as somebody that is selling real estate differently and that you will attract the right people. And and I do notice that on your Instagram, like y'all need to check him out on Instagram. Like I'm sitting here looking at your feed and it is, it is wild, man. It is, it is so next level. And you are doing a great job of separating yourself from anyone else that sells real estate in the game, like period. But when was your first viral moment? Like, can you remember back to when like, like something hit and you knew it hit and you made a bunch of money from, from something viral on Instagram. Can you remember that? Yeah. Yeah. Actually, you know, we all, we've always dreamed of that viral moment and now it's kind of like hit or miss. But I remember back in the day when I was focusing on becoming an outlier, it was okay. How can I stand out from everyone else while doing what I'm passionate about? It was not about just doing something random that could create virality. It was about following a path of doing what I love doing, but at the same time, make myself stand out from everyone else. And that one thing, when I started, it was skydiving, right? I was a professional skydiver. I was skydiving all around the world. And for me, it was, all right, well, how can I start combining all the dots of what I'm doing and do something different? And I went and jumped out of the the plane on the side wearing a suit that video it was shared among some of the biggest pages on social media and that video alone through all the different pages that were shared it was like above 300 million views so i remember even one of the editors from forbes saw this video and reached out to do um, a feature about myself calling me the action man of real estate and through that, I ended up getting some leads. One of those leads became a person that I met at a red carpet event. And within the first year selling real estate here in Miami, when everybody thought that I was only able to do little rentals, because that's how people usually start in real estate, my vision and my dream was always to sell more than a $10 million property on my first year. And I ended up selling a $22 million home my first year of real estate. Mm -hmm. So... I'm not claiming that everything was because of that jump, but definitely that led to many opportunities that gave me more credibility, more exposure, more interesting stories to share, and therefore became a magnet for these people that had the capacity to buy these homes. So guys, you got, got to start thinking about a way, how can you start standing out in your market, right? Because you can find things like you can still do what you love to do and be passionate about it, but you've got to find something 
you know, some kind of extra something that's just going to add a little extra sauce to it and make it like a unique combination, right? Like you even got me thinking like, bro, maybe we need to start jumping out of airplanes or something, bro. Right? Like, I'm not jumping like, out of an airplane, but <laughs> come on. Like I what, do, but, I what, like but, but people, like, what if we jumped out of an airplane with a laptop and we like, we set up a, a Facebook ad by the time we hit the ground, <laughs> you, you think that will go viral, bro? Like actually everybody in the comments type, type in the comments. What do y'all think that we could add to our brand to make it like really stand out. Like, I want to see y'all's ideas. Drop them in the comments below. <laughs> that is a good point too, Alvaro. Like, cause guys, all it takes is one video to put you, put you into a different stratosphere. And then after that, it's all about the consistency, right? So Alvaro, can you talk about your consistency on IG? Like how many times a week do you like to post? Are you doing stories? Are you mm -hmm. doing more reels? Are you doing pictures? Can you break down like your posting strategy? Yeah, and look, it's all around social media, right? Not just Instagram. And the same thing with my business brand, Super Luxury Group. We actually became very viral on TikTok, also on the shorts on YouTube. So it's about finding the different platforms and the different type of content that you can post there. For me, I love to do the breadcrumbing, which is like sharing little pieces of what's going on throughout my day. People can feel what it is to be in the day of Alvaro. Right? So that's also something interesting for people to, to keep in mind. But aside from that, when it comes to like posting, I'm keeping it very high end, but at the same time, very raw. Like a lot of people just focus on super high production content and some just go super raw. I like the balance of keeping things as real as they are, but at the same time, as cool as they get. So it's, it's a mix. And for me, as I built my brand already, I like to keep it exciting, keep it inspiring, keep it entertaining. And I'm adding the touch of educational because you want to also educate people. I love to touch not just about real estate, but also about wellness. You know, a lot of people always tell me, it's like, damn, how, how do you stay so energized? How do you get to do some of the craziest challenges that you've done? Because it's not just about skydiving or flying helicopters, but like I just recently came back from competing at the toughest foot race in the world, which was the Marathon de Sap, six marathons in six days across the desert. And I was doing it for a bigger reason than just pushing myself to the limit. I was doing it to help raise mental health awareness. And a lot of people are currently going through depression. So I was trying to help people that were going through that by carrying those stories with me. So the whole point in here is about keeping it authentic, keep it inspiring, and also make sure that whatever you're doing, there is a bigger purpose because that's what's going to get people drawn into you. I got so many ideas jumping through my head right now. Bro. You know, because like from a branding standpoint, I think that's so genius because everybody has that thing that, you know, because you got your business and what you do for money, right? But then you got other things that you might be really passionate about right? Like for instance, let's just say like you're super passionate about like uh, cooking, right? Like, like let's say you're a marketer, but you have this deep passion for cooking, right? But so if you were to f infuse those two things together, That's now tough. all of a sudden you're like the guy, you're like the marketing guy who likes to like, who, who's like also a chef, you chef know? Chef marketer. Yeah. Listen, brother, like I, I've always said this so many times, like people always try to reinvent the wheel and do weird and do things that they think is going to go viral for the sake of going viral, that's not going to get you anywhere because you want to keep it consistent, as we were saying, right? And in order to keep something consistent, you need to do something that you love doing, that you will do regardless. For me, I'll go skydiving regardless. I will fly helicopters regardless. I will go into these crazy races regardless because that's part of my DNA. So you all of a sudden tell me, look, in order for you to go viral, you need to you know, do something... XYZ that I'm zero passionate about. I might do it once, but I, I'm not going to go that route. So it's going to yeah. cut the momentum really quickly. Mm. So I always said, combine the passions and be creative in the way you do it. Because I'm guaranteeing you, whatever it is that you're doing that is helping you make money, you can always add that spice of another passion that you have and make it unique. Mm. So it's like to wrap that all up, you know, to find your unique brand, you should do what you do to get paid, but then mix that in with something that you would do whether you got paid or not. Yeah, yeah. And, and you that's I mean? how you start build. That's how you start creating your brand. That's how you start creating your sauce. That's how you start, you know, getting that perfect recipe. And right. listen, it works 
for some, it doesn't work for others, but eventually as you keep on crafting those little things and end up getting that nice recipe, it's going to work. Alvaro, are there certain like metrics that we should be looking at when it comes to creating content? And, and, you know, obviously you mentioned the word momentum and how your momentum can get cut short. How do you identify if a piece of content is doing well and if you should continue to do those type of things or, or should I, should you tweak some things based on the type of content that you're creating? How do you identify and kind of play that tug of war? Right. No, it's a great question. I mean, a lot of people give up pretty quickly if they don't see results, right? Like they post a couple of things and it's like, ah, oh, man, nobody liked it. Oh, like nobody commented or, oh, you know what? Like no views. But look, doesn't matter. Like algorithms change every day. You might get more views, less views. Doesn't mean that because you got more engagement in one post is better than the other one that you did. So for me, I always think in terms of what's the long vision? Where am I heading? What is it that I'm trying to build? How can I start building that community within the content that I'm posting? What is my message? What is it that I want to do? For me, I have my book, Level Up, right? Which became a bestseller. It's on Amazon. People want to get it. And when I started to promote the book, I was having so much fun. You know, I was doing things that inspire people to take action and to really do something out of their comfort zone and to level up in their life. So I didn't mind if one video was going to do better than the other, but the message behind was always the same. It was about empowering people to go beyond your fears, to take on that big challenge, to do whatever you think that is going to expand you. And look, I think that consistency here is... The name of the game you want to keep on doing it and start making adjustments because the more that the more you post the better that you're going to get at it the more creative that you're going to be the more that you're going to start understanding certain things that you're doing it's about getting better not about just checking metrics mm. so you hear that y'all like because we have a lot of students and people that come to us that want to work with us and they are so petrified of social media they're petrified of posting every day. They don't like the way their voice sounds. They don't like a lot of different things about themselves. And because of that, they, they don't post, right? But what you're saying is, yo, get out of your comfort zone. Take that action. Don't worry about if, if it's a dud post. Post it anyway and keep posting it and do it continuously. And eventually what's going to happen is the algorithms will recognize that you're trying to keep people on the platform and they'll start shining a light on your content. With us, like, we do not have the following that Alvaro does by any stretch of the imagination. But when we do post, some videos might get 16 to 20,000 views and then other videos might not get anything. But one thing that we keep doing is continue to post regardless of the fact. So I, I love that, Alvaro. Thank you for sharing that with our audience. 100%. And one thing that I wanted to add on top of this is that you need to become the hero of your own story, right? And there is nothing more beautiful than to look back once you've reached certain level of success and to showcase where you were and where you are. When I started looking into what I was posting long time ago or what I was doing before and where I am today, it's just a beautiful reminder of how much you can grow in a certain period of time if you don't give up. So the whole point of posting or creating content from now forward is not just so that you will get more or less likes or more or less comments. It's about also showcasing where you were and where you're going to be at. So a lot of your following has kind of been built up through, you know, influencer marketing, using other people's audiences, organic reach, stuff like that. Have you dabbled into any ads? Has, has, been, has ads been a factor in your growth at all? Have you, what's your experience with running ads? We've done ads. More from the business side, not so much for my personal brand. And from the business side, we've had landing pages, right, for specific services, whether it was for offering our services as a brokerage to help people sell their homes or, you know, for our network, whatever the services that we wanted to focus on. It was always about creating a landing page that had specifically all the information that we wanted to people know about and then ads with the specific content on social media that will trigger people to get there. So it was not so much ads for increasing your audience or increasing your engagement. It was more to create leads. Got you. Got you. Leads and conversions, right? Which is mm -hmm. 
that's that's exactly what we agree with. Like when we run ads, we're not looking to just get likes and followers, right? Like we we need we want sales, we want leads, same exact thing. And I and I agree, y'all should be doing the same thing. Have you when you're running your ads, are you doing like interest based targeting kind of stuff, or are you running any look alike audiences or or yeah, look at look at we started to say everybody, right? Like interest and slowly start getting there, but look alike was very easily because everybody that is getting into anything. We live in such a saturated market. Doesn't matter the industry. Even if you try to become an outlier or disrupt an industry, there is already an audience that is built that is similar to the one that you want. So for us, it was all right. Let's not reinvent the wheel. Look alike. Let's start looking into already those audiences, and we can do it organically through the concept of the OPAs or OPS, other people's stages, or we'll just start creating ads. And why to Compare when you can do both. If there was one particular strategy or one thing that you could share with the audience that will help them get more viewers and more eyeballs on their brand, what would it be? So I'm going to go with, with one thing that they've always asked me, which is like a kind of like a question of what you did, which is best advice I've ever gotten. And this is just to get people fired up. I've always answered that with one word, impossible. And I responded with one word, watch. So my point to this is that a lot of people out there are saying that it's impossible to do a lot of the things that we want to do. The dreamers are those that move the world. And there's a lot of people out there that are going to tell us that we're crazy, that it's impossible. I love it when people say that I'm crazy. That means I'm going in the right direction. So social media per se should be used as a platform to showcase that whatever people think it's impossible, it's possible. So advice for everybody out there that is trying to grow their social media, to grow their brand, to grow their business is go and do whatever people think it's impossible and showcase it in the ground. Trust me, that's going to get you lots of visibility and a lot of engagement. <laughs> mm, that's some really dope advice, man. I think that's probably one of the best, best advice I've ever heard, bro. That's a bar. <laughs> like, I'm being honest. <laughs> like, it's really, really good because that's like, it's almost like your compass, right? It's like, if you're trying to find what you should do, find like, what's all that, the, what are the things that people would like look at you crazy for, right? And do that, right? Say the things that people would think that you're out of your mind for, for thinking that you can accomplish it, uh, accomplish and try to do that. You know what I mean? I love that, bro. I appreciate you sharing that, man. Thank you, brother. And one more yeah. thing, just, just to let people know, where can people find you on Instagram? Go ahead and plug your book and your website and all of those different things. Go ahead and plug that so that people know where to find you. Right, yeah, you can add it in the link wherever you're posting this. And then just for people that are listening and want to just go straight into on Instagram, you can find me at Alvaro Nunez. And over there, you'll have my website, alvaronunez.com, where you can find all the different links to everywhere that I do. And aside from that, if you go straight to Amazon, you can also type in Level Up by Alvaro Nunez and you'll get my book. It's also an audible. So if you are one, of a listener more than a reader, you can get that as well. Awesome, brother. Thank you so much. I will definitely be copying that book. That's on my Audible list. I'm about to download it right now. Thanks. Let's go. Uh, Come on. Let's go. So thank you so much, Alvaro. We really, really appreciate you. For those of y'all watching, hopefully y'all y'all took a lot of gems from this. And don't just sit here and listen to it. Take action on the things that we're teaching because these things can level up your brand to extraordinary heights, y'all. All right, guys. Level up. I'll speak soon. <laughs>